I'm really excited for the next release of Wine, the free and open source compatibility layer that allows you to run Windows software on Linux. And not without reason. Proton, Valve's in-house compatibility layer to run Windows games on Linux, uses it. And up until now, some desktop environments have been suffering from one specific problem. Wine just wasn't Wayland compatible and used the backwards compatibility tool xWayland instead. In today's video, we are going to talk a bit about the upcoming release of Wine and why it could be a big deal for gamers, especially competitive ones. And without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. If you haven't watched one of my previous videos explaining Wayland, in a nutshell, it's a faster and more secure way to transfer information between a client, usually an application or a game, to a compositor and display server, which then prepares the image sent to your display. In the past, most Linux distributions and desktop environments relied on Xorgs implementation with the X11 protocol. However, it does have some performance overhead, caused by its design and immense outdated code base. But since Wayland just took off recently in the past couple of years, a lot of applications just don't support it yet. To solve this problem, we got XWayland, a backwards compatibility tool that runs a so-called X server on top of Wayland. This generally works fine, however, as mentioned earlier, it's a bit slower than running applications on Wayland natively and also introduces some legacy problems like scaling not working that well on applications and multiple desktops. Wine, the Windows compatibility tool, which isn't an emulator by the way, is now finally getting Wayland support, which means that it will eventually end up in Proton as well. So what improvements can we expect from Wayland if it is supposed to be faster than X11? Well honestly, it's not that simple. See, the performance in terms of FPS won't really increase much, because the bottlenecks are typically not the display protocols, but rather all the things that need to be rendered and processed. Where it however does have an impact is latency. And sometimes not that little. I remember a time when dragging your windows around on Linux was always a tiny bit delayed, while on Wayland it was instant. Not so bad that the average user would notice it, but side by side, or if you know what to look for, it was. This is how slow X11 with compositing on is, even right now. There was a solution though. Some desktop environments came with a toggle in the settings, or automatically disabled or ignored compositing whenever an application went full screen. This however didn't always work if you connected multiple monitors, since some GPU drivers or the desktop environment implementations often handled this differently. Mixed refresh rates were also often reported to cause some problems, like stuttering or one monitor limiting the other. And I know, before you wildly type into the comments, not everyone is or was affected by this since many factors play into this. Anyway, with everything running on Wayland, this shouldn't be a problem anymore and games should feel more responsive again. Incredibly important for more competitive games. Speaking of improvements, NT-Sync. It's not really a Wine 10.0 improvement per se, but it's coming out later this year with the Linux kernel 6.14. What it does is to provide the same NT synchronization API used on Windows on the kernel level, which can achieve much higher performance than before. Take these results with a grain of salt though, since they do not factor in any additional synchronization methods like eSync or FSync. Overall performance improvements can still be noticed in some cases though, and it should be another improvement for latency on Linux, which is one of the most important things for mouse and keyboard gamers in my opinion. So basically, we're getting two major improvements when running games on Linux through Wine or Proton, and are also getting better Wayland support in general, which could mean better scaling if you're using windowed mode. You can of course think of Wayland what you want, but eventually it is going to be the superior way to handle graphics on Linux. With support for HDR, variable refresh rates, optional tearing that can be controlled by the user, as well as all the improvements to latency, it kind of already is the superior protocol for gaming. When Apex Legends was still Linux compatible, I used to play it almost exclusively on Wayland. And this was way before the stutter improvements, notably on the GNOME desktop environment. Simply because in the Xorg session, some synchronization issues happened to my dual monitor setup, which caused some weird inconsistent mouse latencies that messed with my muscle memory. That being said, I did experience my fair share of problems with Wayland in the past, especially when it came to the overall smoothness or recording gameplay. But all of that has since been resolved. So, where were we? Ah yeah, wine. Whoops. Anyway, what I'm also really excited about is initial support for ARM. 
While I don't plan on getting a laptop with the ARM architecture just yet, mainly due to missing software support, having some support from one side might actually make gaming possible somewhat soon. Given how polished the gaming experience on Linux is nowadays, especially if you just stick to Steam, it wouldn't really surprise me if gaming on ARM was actually superior on Linux than it is on Windows. And for anyone who is looking for a device with a long-lasting battery, it might be worth a consideration soon. So summarized, here is everything that I am excited for. If Proton is supporting games being run natively on Wayland, we get lower latencies, better frame times and, theoretically speaking, even a slight performance boost, even though X Wayland is also very light. If the NT-Sync driver gets implemented into the Linux kernel this year, we can also expect better out-of-the-box performance, since we don't necessarily need to rely on other synchronization methods. And if ARM support is actually getting better, and I can still wait a bit, it might actually be worth a consideration for me personally. And what I didn't mention before, Wine 10.0 also introduces more robust scaling for high DPI displays and is now also capable to scale applications regardless of what your global system settings are. And those were four big reasons on why I'm excited on what Wine has to offer this year. Overall speaking, it should be another exciting year for Wine on the Linux desktop, making it easier to for once transition from Windows but also simply running more software in general. And that's or I'll leave it. So what do you think of the upcoming changes to Wine? Are they worth it or should developers just develop straight for Linux instead? What are your general thoughts on compatibility layers? Please let us know in the comments below. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel and make even better videos, then please make sure to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.